What was your takeaway from this now that we're actually going through with this? You know, I have to say that I'm a little bit surprised. Um, I haven't read the opinion yet because it was just issued, I believe, while I was waiting to come on Bloomberg and tell, uh, TV this morning. But, you know, this trial was really close. You know, I think the states actually had the easier argument than the companies did here. And so after having attended the entire trial, I thought that the states had made their case. I always thought it was a close call because I think the judge expressed skepticism on both sides. But what it looks like here is that the judge was simply unconvinced that the companies, once they were merged, would have the incentive or the ability to raise prices. And, you know, interestingly, that's even a little bit different from what the Department of Justice determined. Because had the Department of Justice determined that, they may not have required the remedy that they've required where a certain amount of assets that are going to be sold to DISH once the companies merge. So then who are the sort of winners and losers from all of this? Obviously, John Ledger, a huge winner, mm -hmm. but who else? Well, obviously, Sprint's a huge winner. You know, a big part of this trial was the fact that Sprint was sort of a failing or weakened company, that they had an uncertain future going forward. So certainly in this case, both Sprint and SoftBank are huge winners. You know, I think in a way, Dish is as well. I know amongst some equity analysts, there's a little skepticism mm -hmm. about what Dish is going to be able to do with these assets and whether it's really ultimately going to be able to be a successful facilities-based telecom operator. But they're getting a lot of assets here. They're getting a real head start getting into this business. They're getting subscribers. Uh, uh, and so I think that DISH is probably a winner here as well. Uh, did we learn anything about how the government is handling uh, mergers from this? Well, you know, I think that this has been a really unpredictable year in terms of the way the government's been looking at antitrust and mergers. There have been just so many unexpected outcomes. I think here what we see in my mind is that this Department of Justice, when it understands outside of just the antitrust world that the administration is interested in a merger, that the merger could have a broader effect outside of just what antitrust looks at, for instance, this one and what it can do in our country for 5G, that it's going to, mm -hmm. this Department of Justice is going to consider that um, and, and not just sort of keep the blinders on and stay within the confines of antitrust. And I actually think that that means going forward, it's going to be unpredictable, both for these companies and the attorneys that advise them, but also the, the investors that are looking at these deals.